many many dreams I saw about the future. Then we saw the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, in Ihram. Dreams is a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates with you to let you know and to reassure you that whatever you are going through then you are not alone. There were two gang members from the Johnson Crew gang in Birmingham. In the morning the cell was unlocked and for breakfast and straight away I went to him and I told him hey I need to tell you something. He was going to be found guilty and he was going to get a life sentence and the other one would be uh, executed and, and, and that's what uh, that's what happened. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In 2005, I was held in Woodhill Prison in Milton Keynes in the centre of England. At that time, there were a number of gang members from the West Midlands that were held there at the same time as me. In particular, I remember there were two gang members from the Johnson Crew gang in Birmingham who were awaiting trial for two different gang-related murders. They were not Muslim and as time got closer and closer for their trials then they became quite worried and they began to attend Friday prayers. Even though they were not Muslim they they would just go there and just find comfort in, um, in what was happening there and, and they would try to do the actions but neither of them were Muslim. They would talk to me and other prisoners and they were very worried because if they were to be found guilty then that would mean that would be it for the rest of their lives. Um, it's a strange phenomenon in the recent years and years since I came out that I've seen this obsession with gangsters or with gang members where especially amongst young men and young people as if a gangster is somehow something that is cool or something to be uh, looked up to. You have these expressions of he's a G or he's a top G and, and as if it's something to be um, something to be proud of. I spent 11 years in prison in two different in two different countries in England and in America. I met a lot of gangsters and a lot of gang members, real ones, not ones that um, that you see in the in the in the movies. And the reality is completely different to the movies where these were ordinary people who were broken men carrying the burdens of their past and just missing their families. So these two were no different to that. So as time got closer and closer they used to attend Friday prayers and they would speak to me and others about Islam and I'll, I'll talk to them and I'll tell them to seek help in God. Then one night I saw a dream about one of the two gang members. Now of the two gang members one of them, on the face of it, the evidence against him was quite strong. The other one, it was not so strong, it was circumstantial. So the one against whom the evidence was quite strong, I saw a dream where I was with him in Mecca making Umrah in front of the Kaaba in the Masjid al-Haram. I'm wearing ihram, the two pieces of white cloth that the Muslims wear in, in Umrah and he was next to me and he was also in ihram. So we were just there standing there and in front of me slightly towards the right was the black stone and there were lots, the, the mosque was full and lots of other people were going around and making tawaf and going round around the Kaaba and me and him were just standing there and um, when I, when I first saw him come up there, I was surprised because I, in my mind I knew that he isn't Muslim. And I saw him in Ihram and I said to him that 
and I said his name and I said, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, I won my case. I got found not guilty. So I became Muslim and I've come here to give thanks. And so I said, well, that's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's pretty amazing, um, alhamdulillah. And I, and I said words like that to him. So whilst I was talking to him, then we saw the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, in Ihram enter the area in front of us and he came and he kissed the black stone. And then he, he continued to, to make tawaf. When I saw that, then I turned around and I said to that gang member, I said to him that what we have just seen is a great sign. And that means that we, both of us, we must give thanks to Allah for allowing us to witness this great sign. And that was the end of that dream. In the morning, the cell was unlocked and for breakfast. And straight away, I went to him and I told him, hey, I need to tell you something. And I went and I told him all of this dream. And this was three weeks before his trial at the end of 2005, approximately November. And I said to him, if this dream is true, it means that you're going to be found not guilty in your trial in three weeks time. And you're going to become Muslim and you're going to give, go to and you're going to go to Mecca to give thanks for what has happened. And he was understandably he was he was over the moon he was he was really happy a few days after that i saw another dream in which i saw his relative who was also standing trial for a gang related murder but in an unrelated case they were not co-defendants in the same case and what i saw in that dream was basically that he was going to be found guilty and he was going to get a life sentence. Obviously, I did not go to him and tell him that dream because I did not want it to come true and I did not want him to, to I did not want to put him down. So I just went, oh, went around, um, went about my way as if nothing had happened. Three weeks later, that first gang member and the evidence against him was very strong. He went to trial and after a, few, after a few weeks at trial, I think the trial lasted two or three weeks, he got found, the jury found him not guilty and he went home. And so he, when his relative was speaking to him on the phone and um, I was nearby and, and he said to me, he goes, hey, my, my, you know, my relative, he says uh, hello to you. I mean, I wasn't allowed to to speak on you're not allowed to speak on someone else's uh, um, line so I shouted to him I said well ask him if he remembers the dream and um, he he said back uh, his relative said to me he said that yes he said he does uh, remember that uh, does remember that dream a number of years later I think six or seven years later I was in another prison in Long Larton prison and that same gang member he came from outside to visit someone else and uh, another person from his gang and in the visits hall he was there and at the end as he got up to walk away then i asked him i said to him that uh, you know i exchanged their greetings with him and i asked him i said do you remember that dream and he looked at me and he said i always remembered you he said i always remembered you and that dream that you had and it's because of that dream that you had is what I went home he goes even when I went outside because I told my family my friends my people I told all of them that this man he saw a dream about me and because of that dream that's why um, I, I came home so at that time when I met him in 2012 several years later he had not become Muslim at that time I don't know if he has now but his relative the one who a few months later that relative whom I saw in the dream that he was going to be found guilty, he got found guilty and he was given a life sentence. But a couple of years later, he became Muslim. 
the one who was in the prison, he became he became Muslim. What is the relevance of this to the Quran? And that is we see in Surah Yusuf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is talking about Yusuf when he entered the prison, fatayan, that two young men entered the prison with him. So one of them said to Yusuf السلام, that I saw in a dream that I was pressing, uh, making wine. And uh, the other one said that um, I was, um, I found that I was crucified and birds were eating from my, from my head. And then Yusuf السلام, used that as an opportunity to tell them about Allah and to believe in Allah. And he interpreted those dreams for them that one of them would make it out of the prison and he would work for the, the king and the other one would be uh, executed and, and, and that's what uh, that's what happened. So this was just um, one story that um, I wanted to share. I saw many, many dreams at some point. I would I will share that. But many, many dreams I saw about the future. I saw my own future. I saw the future of things that were going to happen uh, in with regards to my family. I saw dreams in relation to geopolitics uh, and events happening in the world and, and wars and current events. Many of these things, they foretold what was going to happen in the future. Why? Not because I have some special holiness or there's something special, but rather people that are going through hardships and difficulties and great calamities, they also talk about seeing these dreams. And dreams are a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He communicates with the person, with the believer who is under trials and tribulations. Dreams is a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates with you to let you know and to reassure you that whatever you are going through, then you are not alone, that He is with you and that there is a divine force that is there with you. And at times when I would be completely broken, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would show me a dream and that would uplift me. And it was almost as if I would see, it's like he was showing me there's a movie and he had fast forwarded to the, uh, a latter part in the, in, the, uh, in the movie. And he had shown me that this is where you're going to be. This is what you are going through now. This is not going to be like as it is forever. There's going to be an ending or you will see better days uh, uh, again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أخي أنت حر